This video is for anyone who is living or working with people from other cultures and would like to understand them better, get along better, have a richer and more rewarding relationship. Maybe you've heard of the emotional bank account metaphor where everything you do that another person appreciates is a deposit in the bank account and everything you do that irritates or bothers or upsets that person is a withdrawal. In this video, we're going to look at the international dimension of the emotional bank account. Very important for anyone who is interacting with people from other cultures. So if you want to have better international relationships, stick around. My name is Brenda Padilla Erickson. I'm a specialist in cultural diversity. I've been living in Spain for the past 25 years, and I just want to remind everyone that the emotional bank account metaphor comes from The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, perhaps my favorite book of all times where you get a lot of great ideas about how to improve your relationships among many other things. All right, just a refresher. Between you and every person in your life, there's this invisible emotional bank account. We want to think about the international dimension of this metaphor because when we're working with people from other cultures or living with them, maybe we're hosting an exchange student, for example, there's a different dynamic that comes into play when we're trying to make deposits and trying to be careful about our withdrawals. So let's start with deposits. You know, when we want to contribute to a relationship and make it richer, we want to do something that the other person perceives as a deposit. But what happens when that person is from a different culture? Well, in different cultures around the world, and I've had to learn this sometimes the hard way when I moved outside the United States and came to Spain, but in different cultures, people learn to value different things or maybe the same things we value in our own country, but in a different order uh, on their hierarchy of values. So let me give you an example. In the United States and in Spain, Having a meal with your family tends to be a deposit in a lot of emotional bank accounts. I know in the United States, my mom appreciates that, my dad as well, and in Spain, my in-laws really appreciate it when we sit down and have a meal with them. But I've had to make some important cultural adaptations in the way I make this kind of deposit, all right? So in the United States, I can have a meal with my family kind of on the run. I mean, we eat maybe within an hour, hour and a half, everything's done and everybody's off in their different directions. We've had a great time and everybody feels good. We feel kind of filled up, you know, our emotional bank accounts after a nice meal together. Here in Spain, people tend to spend a lot more time around the table. Meals can go on for hours. They tend to happen on the weekends and start at around 12 or one, and by four or five, you're having your coffee after the meal. I mean, you're sitting around all this time talking, going through various courses, and it's a real bonding experience in a very Spanish way. My American way of making this have a meal together deposit in the family bank accounts would not work over here. In fact, it would be perceived as a withdrawal. I like to compare this uh, with currencies. So, you know, in the United States, I spend dollars and here in Europe, I use euros. In Spain, I'm spending euros. And it's the same way with emotional bank account. When you change cultures, when you're working with different cultures, you use different currencies. And think about this. People from other cultures, whether you're working with them or you're living with them, they need to understand what you consider to be a deposit. And that's where I really love this metaphor of the emotional bank account, because when you share it with people from other cultures, it becomes a kind of language you can use to talk about your relationships. What about withdrawals? What about those times when we do something that rubs another person the wrong way or makes them feel disrespected or offended? we may not even realize it. Just think for a minute about all those lists of things you should and shouldn't do when you go to another country. That tells you that in cultures around the world, the rules for what's okay and what's not can be very different. There's something really important about the withdrawals and it's remembering that a withdrawal is anything that the other person perceives 
as a withdrawal. So it has to do with perception. And the only way we can work with that is to communicate. We need to have these lines of communication open when we're living or working with someone from another culture. And that's again where the emotional bank account metaphor comes in so handy. Once you've in introduced it, and you're using it to talk about your relationship and to check in now and then and see how things are going and hey, how's our balance? How do you feel about the deposits? Is there something you wish I was doing differently? Do you feel like I'm making any withdrawals? Let's talk about this. It's a great way to get the cards on the table. Are you ready to get out there and rev up your international relationships? I hope that the international dimension of the emotional bank account is useful for you Thanks for joining me. Subscribe to this channel and you'll get more videos about all aspects of cultural diversity. We're always aiming to make your life more fun and more fascinating.